So pleased to welcome to set today Darius Coombs, who's the director of the Wampanoag and Eastern Woodlands at Plymouth Plantation. Welcome, Darius. Thank you. We have at PAC TV have been lucky enough to work with the Plymouth Plantation on a couple of different uh, documentaries over mm -hmm. the past couple of years, and both of which have won Telly Awards. Now, just for people who don't know what a Telly Award is, it's an award, uh, it's a premier award honoring outstanding content for TV, cable, digital, and streaming, and non-broadcast distribution. The Tellys is widely known and respected. It's a national and international competition, and we get uh, over 12,000 entries from 50 states and five countries. Yep. So to win a Telly is a pretty big deal. And to win two, that's even special, all right? And to win two <laughs> is even more special. Now, yeah. last summer, you worked with our, our kids in the documentary program and created a um, People of the First Light Thanksgiving, a Native Perspective. Talk about that. Yeah, um, seventh and eighth graders from towns around Plymouth. And I remember getting an email from Donna mm -hmm. Rodriguez, and she goes, do you mind coming in and hearing these kids' ideas on doing a small documentary during the summer at, at Plum Plantation down the Wampanoag home site? I'm like, sure. So I came in. I talked to the kids. Mm -hmm. And I asked them what they had for ideas. And um, they didn't have too many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I asked them, is this going to be a personal project, one-on-one? -on -one? Is this going to be a group project? They said, do we want to do a group project? Yeah. Oh, so I, said, I said, OK. So when do you want to start filming? Next week, I think they said. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't give you a lot of lead time. I'm yeah. like, next week, yeah. and you guys want to do a group project. About Thanksgiving, right? Well, we didn't have, we didn't get that, that far yet. Okay. So uh, we were just brainstorming ideas, and that's when I thought, I go, the easiest thing for you guys to do is do something on Thanksgiving, because that's what we've been doing at the museum for, oh, I don't know, a lot of old 50 years, you know, right. 60 years. Right, right. And, um, but we'll put a little bit of a twist on it, you know? It's not just Thanksgiving. Right. What I wanted them to do is go down to the Wampanoag home site and interview Native people and get the Native perspective on Thanksgiving. Which, which is very different from a what, little different. what a lot of people think, right? Yeah. For us as Native people, we give Thanksgiving almost every, pretty much every day Right. Right. Uh, for being here on Mother Earth. And um, Thanksgiving today takes on a little bit of a different meaning because when the colonists first got here, they did learn how to plant um, corn. Mm -hmm. And that first year, they had a very large harvest. And they invited, we think they invited Massasoit to come along to a feast. Massasoit was the one who made a treaty with the English in 1621. Okay. And when he came late September, early October, he brought 90 of his men to this feast. Okay. And that feast went on for three days. Wow. <laughs> it's a three-day feast. Wow. You think of all. <laughs> three-day Thanksgiving. <laughs> and you, and you yeah. think a lot of the pictures um, of that feast, you see the colonists on them, the native people. Right. But it's pretty much the opposite, you know. Yeah. And they never, ever mentioned turkey being at that feast. Right, right, which is a big <laughs> misnomer that it was turkey. It they was meant, some they, kind of fowl, but it wasn't turkey. It was, uh, could have been duck, could have yeah. been partridge, could have been quail. Yeah. We definitely know there was deer there, because yeah. Massachusetts sent his men on hunting, and they came back with five deer. So you, you, you had the kids um, do this documentary based on the native perspective of Thanksgiving and how it wasn't the way we, we thought it was. How do you think they did? Um, they did a really great job. I told them that some of the answers that you're going to hear from the Native people is my, not what you think it's going to be for an right, answer. Right. For us, a lot of times, it's not considered to be a big celebration. It's, um, for us, it's maybe a day of mourning. Right. We just want to recognize the ones we've lost in the past. Yes. It's also, like I said, we give thanks every day for being here. Right. And, um, so we're at the museum that day. A lot of us work there. And, um, you're going to see a lot of Native people wearing black face paint and such, mm -hmm. just to recognize the ones we lost in the past. Right, right. But it's also time we spend a lot of time with our families. So. Right, which is wonderful. Now, we also did another um, documentary with you. With the, it was about paddling through history, which, which talked about creating a machine. A, mach a machine meaning boat in our language, yep. right? And that how that came about to be is back in 2010, we went down to the um, Smithsonian National Museum of American Indian, Indian as a program, yep. as a field trip. Mm -hmm. And when we walked into the museum, we saw a circle of canoes from the Americas. Mm -hmm. But we did not see the most common boat you would have seen in the Americas, which is a dugout canoe. Out of a tree. Out of a tree, which yep. is all burnt out. Yep. And our boats are ranging anywhere from a two-man boat to boats big enough to carry over 40 men. Mm -hmm. So myself, it was a no-brainer with a Smithsonian affiliate. <clears throat> Why not donate a canoe, a machine, to the Smithsonian? Right. Um, to the National Museum, and so I wrote the register, and they said we would love to have one. Right. And that's how it came about. And we also got a small grant. We brought on Native scholars, and what the boat means for diplomacy for us mm -hmm. as Native people back then, mm -hmm. transportation, um, how we got around, you know. Right. 
So um, and we put it into a into a documentary. We made it. There's a documentary Which that we you won a back. Telly Award for. We won. Right? We won our first Telly Award. Yeah. And it is now showing at the Smithsonian, correct? It's uh, on a rotating exhibit. Yep. It's in and out. With it's with a, the actual machine that you built. A 16 foot machine, yeah. main canoe, held, it holds three people. And um, what's kind of special about it is, it's, it's not just a boat being delivered down to the Smithsonian. Um, Congressman Keating spoke about this in the House of Representatives. Nice. And what it means for Native people in general. Right. Because a lot of people think there aren't any people living on the East Coast anymore. And there are. Oh, yeah. A lot of you. Now, you're going to, um, the, the, the <clears throat> Mayflower 2 is going to come back in 2019 from being renovated in, in Mystic, Connecticut. <clears throat> yeah. You're, you're, you are going to create a 40-foot machine to go out and meet them? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, we've been having numerous meetings at the plantation. Uh, what we want to do about 2020 coming up, and um, we have the Mayflower being away at Mystic being restored right now. Yep. And for a native program, the Wampanoag program being there well, over 40 years, so we always want to have native presence. Mm -hmm. um, that we've been here for over 12,000 years. Yes. And so when Mayflower comes back in 2019 mm -hmm. into Plymouth Harbor, we want to be out in those waters. Yep. When they come back. That's right. They show native presence. That's right. So what we plan on doing next year is building a 40-foot boat, mm -hmm. machine, yeah, which could hold 20 people, mm -hmm. which will be considered to be the largest canoe machine in New England today. Wow. Once we have it completed. That's terrific. And have you already started the process of building it? We are in search of a log right now big enough. Okay. It's so. going to take a big one, right, to do that? <laughs> Extremely big tree. Yeah. Well, back then we had tree, we had a boat that would hold 40 men. Right. But you have to put yourself back in time. Yeah. We had trees over 150 foot in height, mm. white pines over mm -hmm. six foot wide. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we have like three different recordings of Europeans seeing 40 man boats being sailed right. out to Nantucket Island. Wow. But like I said, you have to put yourself back in time. We don't have those trees around anymore. No, no, they're not. <clears throat> right. So we have a major search going out right now to trying to locate a 40 foot. Yeah, log. and you have to have the right type of tree. It's, it's got to be able to work. And then you burn it out and you, you create a 40 foot machine that'll hold 20 right. people. And you will be there when the Mayflower 2 sails back. We will be out in the waters. You will that be day. in the waters. That That's day. right. And as it's, as it's symbolic as well as everything else. Well, this show show native presence that we, we're still here. That's right. We've been around this area for over 12,000 years, you know. So. And given so much. Sure. Yes, in very many ways. Well, thank you so much. This went too fast. Um, congratulations on your tally. We hope to be working with you again. Thank you very much. Thank you.